As the Ukraine Russia war drags on, Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to move one of Russia's holiest icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. He said in the 60s that Jesus was a black man. Have you ever come across biblical icons that portray Jesus, the Virgin Mary, Elisha, or King Solomon with dark skin? If you have, then you should know that Russia has recently opened its vault to reveal biblical icons featuring darker-skinned figures. This is not an unusual depiction of biblical figures, but rather a factual representation. These icons hold deep meanings and hidden truths, sparking curious questions about history, faith representation, and the unexpected corners of religious art. I just got one question. How you white Christians feeling now that Putin done open up the vote? and done showed y'all what I've been telling y'all, what we've been telling y'all, you know, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, is a black man. He's a black man all day long. Ladies and gentlemen, gather around. This video is about to uncover the truth. Get ready to be amazed and enlightened. Please hit the like button to show your support. Share it with your friends and family to spread our eye-opening extra narrative. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more. In this video, we'll explore the origin of these unique religious icons, why Vladimir Putin has been involved in their unveiling, how the world has reacted, and the biblical descriptions of Jesus. So buckle up as we dive into the world of Black Jesus in Russia. The history of Black Jesus icons dates back to the 14th century. These icons have been preserved over time thanks to the efforts of museums. They showcase predominantly black figures, which is a departure from the typical European depiction of Jesus and his followers. The earliest known painting of Christ found in Syria around 235 AD, portrays him with short, woolly hair and dark skin. This is in contrast to the prevailing image of Jesus as a bearded, fair-skinned figure with wavy light brown or blonde hair, often with blue eyes, that is deeply rooted in Western interpretation. First of all, it's important to recognize that the Bible is uh, represents a world before color prejudice. The Bible represents a world that has a very favorable attitude towards blacks. It's a multicultural world. Yes, it is. One of the great tragedies has been that in the last 400 years, Europeans and white Americans have created the whole ideology of white supremacy and they have in the process taken the images, sacred images as well as secular images of, that are victorious and positive and made those uh, images white uh, and, uh, and by the same token they have recast black into a negative image. During a visit to the Solovetsky Monastery, Vladimir Putin was introduced to a 16th century icon depicting black Jesus. This experience sparked his interest in these unique religious artifacts, leading to increased efforts to restore and promote them throughout Russia. Putin has been a strong advocate for the preservation and recognition of Black Jesus icons, recognizing their importance to Russia's cultural and religious heritage. His support has facilitated not only the restoration of these icons, but also their integration into the public domain, enhancing their visibility and appreciation. When we learned how to remove the dark layers, we discovered underneath an overwhelming beauty, to such an extent that it shocked André Matisse, who was in Moscow at the time. He said, it's here that artists should come to learn to paint, not to Italy. 
To better understand the historical context of Black Jesus icons, we need to go back in time and delve into early Christian art and Anakinism. In the first few centuries of Christianity, Anakinism, which is the rejection of religious images, had a strong influence on Christian art. However, this opposition to images was eventually rejected during the Antinicene period, leading to an increase in Christian art and the depiction of Jesus in various forms. The most common image of Jesus during this time was the Good Shepherd, which showcased the diversity of representations from the outset. By the year 300 AD, a common appearance for Jesus had developed, with a popular portrayal of him as a bearded, long-haired figure. Icons such as Christ Pantocrator, created in the 6th century, established a recognizable image of him while still reflecting ethnic characteristics. Despite this standardization, images of Jesus continued to display distinct ethnic characteristics that were similar to those of the culture in which the image was produced. This highlights the adaptability of Jesus' image across different societies. The unveiling of black Jesus icons has caused a stir across the world. The Archbishop of Canterbury's suggestion to reconsider the portrayal of Jesus following Floyd's murder in America was met with opposition by the Russian Orthodox Church, who claimed that such depictions go against church laws. On the other hand, the depiction of a black Jesus has also been used as a symbol of support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Well, if Jesus was here, he would say lives matter. I know, for example, if Jesus was here, he would say that the black lives that are being obliterated in the womb matter. And as a Christian, I believe that lives matter from the moment of conception all the way to their moment of natural death. Okay. And so I'm absolutely committed to lives mattering. An art piece named Last Supper portrays Jesus as black. The world's response to these icons has brought attention to the ongoing controversies regarding the representation of religious figures and the role of art in questioning societal norms. I mean, but who's who's actually surprised about this though, gang? Just let me know. Cause even the Pope and them been praying to the black Jesus for the longest since the beginning of time. I don't care. I'm glad it's getting put out there because it's the truth. And I've known it since as long as I can remember. I've just known that. But I'm glad to know that other people are finally waking up to that truth. I'm very happy that the truth is finally out. Nevertheless, I am very happy that the truth, even under this kind of a sauce, so to speak, it's coming out and we all are here to celebrate it. Psychological warfare. You assume he has no benefit of saying this. There's way more going on than you and I know. I know that all of the religions and all of the governments of the world are one. But not a good unity. An evil unity like we saw with COVID, March of 2020. This coming from a guy who has been known to persecute quote-unquote, Christians in his country. I don't trust him. And currently, I don't speak Russian. Many people believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, and the Savior of humanity. His teachings and actions have influenced billions of people worldwide, shaping their beliefs and values. The depiction of Jesus as either black or white is a matter of artistic expression and interpretation, reflecting the cultural and historical contexts in which these icons were created. Bible scriptures related to Jesus 
can be found throughout the Bible. One such scripture is Isaiah 53-2, which describes Jesus as having no stately form or majesty that would attract people to him. This passage emphasizes that Jesus' appearance was ordinary and did not draw attention to him. Other scriptures, such as Matthew 26, 67, 27, 30, and John 19, 3, describe Jesus' appearance as he was being scourged before his crucifixion. His appearance was so disfigured that he no longer looked like a human being. These scriptures provide a glimpse into Jesus' physical appearance during his earthly life. The black Jesus icons found in Russia challenge the traditional depictions of Jesus. They encourage a deeper understanding of religious imagery, which has sparked a wider conversation on religious art and identity, both in Russia and internationally. Anyone who knows anything about icons will immediately recognize this image as the Trinity, the or otherwise known as the Hospitality of Abraham of Andrei Rublev. Vladimir Putin's involvement in their unveiling has raised their significance. Putin Vladimir decided that this is a good time for him to open one of the oldest vaults that he has been holding on for so many years. But what I'm going to say is this, it's one of the oldest vaults that holds basically some of like the most important, you know, art as far as portraying to religion and who Jesus was and, and how Jesus looked like. So he decided that this is a good time to open it, <laughs> Mr. Putin. <laughs> Let me tell you why this is going to rough up some feathers, especially in the religion community and in a Christianity community. You're trying to tell a group of people that their Jesus was not black. You're trying to tell a group of people who truly believe that Jesus was white. <sighs> For those who doesn't understand how religions have played into, specifically uh, Christianity have played into colonization and, and have made it possible and, and, and created access for, for, for colonizers to go to other countries and, and, and you know, conquer. Jesus was black. Oh. in Russia, fostering a rich cultural exchange. Byzantine iconography, known for its stylized representations of religious figures, significantly influenced Orthodox visual culture in Russia. Byzantine artists were often commissioned to create religious icons, frescoes, and mosaics for Russian churches and monasteries. These artworks depicted Black Jesus, Black Mary, and Black Israelites, which was the truth of that time. The 13th century Mongol invasion, known as the Mongol Tatar yoke, brought significant upheaval to Russia, disrupting cultural and religious practices. This conquest subjected Russian principalities to Mongol rule leading to economic and social turmoil. The Mongols imposed tribute payments on Russian princes and established governing structures, affecting various aspects of Russian society. Despite these challenges, the Orthodox Church continued to operate, though its autonomy diminished. Interestingly, during this period of Mongol rule, the Byzantine Empire was undergoing a whitewashing era, where religious leaders began promoting the idea of a white Jesus. However, this concept did not reach Russia, which was isolated from Byzantine influence due to the Mongol occupation. Without strict oversight from the Byzantine church, Russian artists continued to depict Jesus as black. This preservation was not solely an artistic choice. It was partly due to the copying of earlier Byzantine artworks that had already spread throughout Russia. Due to the Mongol invasion, Religious paintings in Russia were inadvertently preserved and protected from the general whitewashing that was taking place throughout Europe. This phenomenon ensured that the traditional depictions of Jesus, Mary, and other biblical figures with darker skin tones remained prevalent in Russian religious art. But the Russian president talked about some historical religious paintings. What do they reveal? Russian religious iconography from the 12th to the 14th centuries is a fascinating aspect of Orthodox Christianity's artistic heritage. Father Vladimir Ivanov's book, Russian Icons, serves as a thorough guide to understanding these artworks and exploring their history, symbolism, 
and spiritual significance. His book is a seminal work in the field, meticulously documenting various aspects of icon creation. Ivanov examines techniques such as egg tempera paint and the use of gold leaf, along with traditional methods of hieratic composition and stylization. He emphasizes that iconographers deliberately chose dark or black complexions for figures like Jesus, Mary, Israelites, and angels, rather than these tones being a result of aging or fading. A notable feature of these icons is their deliberate portrayal of religious figures with dark complexions, challenging more common European depictions, and highlighting a distinct visual narrative within Russian Orthodoxy. Ivanov's analysis underscores the profound theological and cultural significance of these artistic choices. Several iconic examples illustrate this unique artistic tradition. Andrei Rublev's Trinity, depicting three angels visiting Abraham, portrays all figures with dark complexions, challenging traditional norms, and deepening the icon's spiritual impact. Similarly, the Theotokos of Vladimir, depicting the Virgin Mary and infant Jesus with darker complexions, emphasizes Mary's role as the mother of Jesus, bridging human and divine realms with maternal love. Icons like Savior in a Golden Risa, showing Jesus adorned with a golden frame, further underscore the reverence attributed to Christ's image in Orthodox worship. The use of dark complexions in these icons, combined with designs and precious materials, highlights their spiritual significance and aesthetic value within the faith community. After centuries of being hidden, these religious paintings have now come before the world. These paintings were earlier hidden due to Mongols' threat, fearing that Mongols would destroy them. However, after centuries, Russian President Vladimir Putin decided to open the vaults and reveal the truth to the world. That's why he officially declared Jesus was black and that Russia would pray and serve black Jesus from now on. But we see something more surprising in Russian religious iconography. The angels have also been portrayed as black. A notable instance is seen in the Ustug Annunciation, depicting the Archangel Gabriel announcing Mary's divine pregnancy. Both Gabriel and Mary are depicted with darker skin tones, departing from the traditional European depictions prevalent in Western Christian art. Another renowned icon, the Elusa, meaning tenderness, or compassion in Greek, explores the intimate bond between Mary and Jesus. Here, Mary cradles Jesus close to her, their cheeks touching, to symbolize her role as a compassionate intercessor and protector of humanity. This depiction emphasizes Mary's maternal tenderness and the sacred connection between mother and child, transcending mere physical appearance. Both Jesus and Mary have been portrayed as black. Similarly, our Lady of St. Theodore portrays Mary holding Jesus, her right hand raised in blessing. This icon challenges traditional Eurocentric depictions by presenting both Mary and Jesus with dark complexions. In the painting titled, Jesus with John the Baptist and the Virgin, John the Baptist and Mary stand alongside Christ in positions of authority and judgment. Their raised hands symbolize prayer on behalf of humanity depicted with darker skin tones that challenge conventional racial perceptions in religious iconography. Another significant icon, Christ Pantocrator, portrays Jesus as the Almighty and All-Powerful, with a dark complexion that contrasts with traditional Western depictions. These icons provoke important reflections on Jesus' heritage and appearance, challenging the traditional Western portrayals that often depict Him with fair skin and European features. This invites deeper exploration into the historical and cultural contexts that shaped early Christian iconography and its diverse representations of biblical figures. You should know that biblical accounts provide minimal physical descriptions of Jesus, leaving interpretation and artistic representation open. Scholars suggest historical evidence indicating Jesus likely had darker features rooted in his Jewish heritage and the geographical context of first century Judea. This perspective challenges long-standing Eurocentric interpretations and encourages a more inclusive understanding of Jesus' cultural and historical identity. Religious scholars have been very careful in not revealing too much. Therefore, they are often heard saying that Jesus was certainly darker than how Europeans depicted in paintings. They don't explicitly say that Jesus was black. 
the depiction of Jesus in Revelation chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, presents a vivid portrayal that sharply contrasts with traditional Western images. Described with hair resembling white wool, fiery eyes, feet glowing like bronze, and a voice like rushing waters, this description suggests features more in line with a black representation. This interpretation challenges long-standing Western depictions of Jesus as fair-skinned with European features, prompting a re-evaluation of how we understand his appearance within the context of history and biblical texts. In Russia, there's a noticeable shift in how Jesus' ethnic identity is perceived, moving away from the conventional portrayal of him as white. Historically, Russian depictions of Jesus mirrored those found in Western European art, portraying him with fair skin and European characteristics. However, recent discoveries of ancient paintings throughout Russia depict Jesus with darker skin tones, leading to a reassessment of his racial identity and sparking profound cultural and theological discussions. President Vladimir Putin has taken a notable stance on this issue, urging religious leaders and priests to embrace the representation of a black Jesus. Instead of resisting the truth, Putin encouraged everyone to be open to the truth and ask for forgiveness for depicting Jesus as white, when, in reality, he was black and has been black. The movement calling for the repainting of religious paintings to accurately depict Jesus and his people as black represents a significant response to centuries of historical inaccuracy and cultural insensitivity. This initiative aims to address a long-standing practice deeply ingrained in colonialism, racism, and Eurocentric perspectives, where religious art has predominantly portrayed Jesus and other biblical figures with fair skin and European features. People now advocate for repainting these artworks to authentically represent the ethnicity of Jesus and the Israelites, striving to achieve a more inclusive and diverse portrayal of religious figures. Historically, the whitewashing of Jesus and the Israelites in religious art has deep roots. This practice emerged during periods of European colonial expansion and cultural dominance, where portraying Jesus as white not only normalized but also perpetuated colonial narratives and reinforced racial hierarchies. Such depictions not only distorted historical truths, but also marginalized and erased the rich ethnic and cultural identities of the Middle East and North Africa the regions where Jesus and his contemporaries lived. The movement to reverse this whitewashing directly challenges these harmful narratives. By advocating for the accurate depiction of Jesus and his followers as black in religious artwork, proponents argue for correcting historical inaccuracies and presenting a more respectful portrayal that acknowledges the diversity of humanity. Under the leadership of Vladimir Putin, Russia has emerged as a significant advocate for this cultural shift. Putin's administration has demonstrated a willingness to embrace diversity and confront historical inaccuracies in artistic representations. This positions Russia to potentially lead efforts in repainting religious artwork to portray Jesus and the Israelites as black within its churches. Such initiatives not only aim to improve historical accuracy and cultural sensitivity, but also set a compelling example for churches globally. In one meeting with officials and religious leaders, the Russian president revealed that Jesus Russia would be praying. He opened a golden frame and in it was Jesus painting, depicting him as black. This officially declared that Russia now only believes in black Jesus and will start to bring all the historic religious paintings to their true color. What do you think should the Christian world accept black Jesus as Russia did and start putting the original paintings in churches and homes? Isn't it true that the Western world whitewashed Jesus to make him the God of white people only, even though Jesus himself was black? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on which Jesus you will pray from now on, black or white. Were Jesus Christ, his mother, the Virgin Mary, and his people black or white? This has been a long debated question. Europe has always tried to depict Jesus as a fair white man with blue eyes, long blonde hair, and tall height. This was further strengthened by paintings from the 15th century, where Jesus appeared much like a typical European man. But does this prove Jesus was white? Well, not necessarily. 
The recent 14th and 15th century paintings revealed by Russia prove that Jesus was not white, but black. He, his mother, and the people around him were all black. That's a groundbreaking revelation, questioning why Europe depicted Jesus as white until now. So, what have we found in the centuries-old Russian cellars and vaults? What people have been shown in the paintings found in these vaults that completely change biblical teachings? Let's know about that in this video. Recently, news surfaced that Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered the relocation of one of Russia's most sacred icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. For centuries, these paintings remained locked in vaults, but now, the world has the chance to observe them. This fundamentally changes our understanding of Jesus, his mother, and his disciples. These paintings are called the Russian icons, which are collections of hundreds of paintings depicting Jesus' era and his life. In Russian icons, Father Vladimir Ivanov explores Russian iconography in depth, offering insights into the history, symbolism, and spiritual significance of these sacred artworks. Authored by a distinguished expert in the field, Father Ivanov presents readers with a comprehensive overview of Russian iconography, covering various aspects. However, even if the artworks show various instances, they have one similarity. They show Jesus, his mother, people, and even angels as black. Father Ivanov discusses the artistic techniques used in Russian icon painting, including the application of egg tempera paint, gold leaf, and traditional iconographic methods such as hieratic composition and stylized forms. Examining the role of icons in orthodox devotional practices, including veneration, processions, and their use in private and public worship, the book illuminates the profound impact of icons on believers' spiritual lives. Some of the paintings even depict the pre-Jesus era. For example, Andrei Rublev's Trinity illustrates the biblical story of three angels visiting the patriarch Abraham at the Oak of Mamre, as described in the book of Genesis. Within Christian belief, this event represents the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, revealing themselves to Abraham as three guests. However, there is something shocking in this painting. The complexion of all those present in the painting is dark and black. A famous painting, Savior in a Golden Ridza, typically features an icon portraying Jesus Christ adorned with a golden Ridza. In Orthodox Christian tradition, a Riza is a metal covering or frame that embellishes an icon, often made from gold or silver. The primary focus of the painting is Jesus Christ, depicted in the traditional Orthodox iconography. He is commonly depicted with a halo around his head, symbolizing his divine nature. His facial expression may vary, often conveying compassion, serenity, or solemnity reflecting his role as the savior and spiritual guide. Interestingly, Jesus is depicted in a dark brown or black complexion. The golden Riza surrounding the icon of Jesus is intricately designed, featuring elaborate patterns, engravings, and sometimes gemstones. It signifies the reverence and value attributed to Christ's image in Orthodox worship. Moreover, the Riza serves as a visual reminder of the magnificence and majesty of God, reinforcing the belief in Jesus as the divine Son of God. Then comes the painting Theotokos of Vladimir, which is deeply revered within the Orthodox Christian tradition. It depicts the Virgin Mary, also known as the Theotokos, cradling the infant Jesus in her arms. The term Theotokos translates to God-bearer or Mother of God, highlighting Mary's role as the Mother of Jesus, who is believed to possess both human and divine nature. Interestingly, both Jesus and his Mother appear non-white, with their complexion leaning toward black color. Mary has a calm expression in the painting, tenderly holding Jesus, supporting his body with one hand while gently caressing his cheek with the other. Jesus is portrayed as a young child, often extending his right hand in a gesture of blessing. 
Among the Russian icons found in the vaults is Ustyug Annunciation, a painting that completely redefines angels' appearances. This painting portrays the Annunciation, a significant event in the Christian tradition where the Archangel Gabriel informs the Virgin Mary that she will conceive and give birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Both Gabriel and the Virgin Mary are depicted as black. In no way do they have a fair complexion, blue eyes, and blonde hair. Another famous painting is Elusa, which means tenderness or compassion in Greek. In religious art, it represents a specific depiction of the Virgin Mary cradling the infant Jesus in a close embrace, with their cheeks touching. This portrayal highlights the intimate bond between mother and child, symbolizing Mary's role as a compassionate intercessor and protector of humanity. In this painting, we see the same pattern, and both Jesus and his mother appear darker. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Africa's geopolitics, economy, and changing landscape. Let's continue now. In the collection is a painting titled Our Lady of St. Theodore, which shows the Virgin Mary holding the infant Jesus, often portrayed as a young child, with her right hand raised in a gesture of blessing. The Virgin Mary is linked with the protection of Constantinople and is revered as a guardian and patroness of the Byzantine Empire. Again, we see both Jesus and his mother as black, not white. This might cause people to think that perhaps only Jesus and his mother were black. Well, the fact is, according to these paintings, the people among whom Jesus and his mother lived were also black. The famous painting titled Jesus with John the Baptist and the Virgin in the collection shows the mediation of John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary. In this painting, John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary are depicted in a position of authority and judgment alongside Christ, known as Christ the Judge or Christ Pantocrator. John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary are shown with raised hands in prayer, appealing to Christ on behalf of humanity. Another painting from the collection titled Christ Pantocrator presents Christ as the Pantocrator, signifying almighty and all-powerful. Jesus' complexion is dark and black, while he is depicted as the ruler and judge of the universe, with his right hand raised in blessing and his left hand holding a gospel book, symbolizing his role as the Word of God. This portrayal emphasizes Christ's sovereignty, authority, and divine majesty. After seeing these paintings, the earlier doubts about Jesus' heritage and complexion become valid concerns. Jesus' black heritage holds historical significance, situating him in a specific time and place, much like his followers. For centuries, the prevailing depiction of Jesus Christ, particularly in Western cultures, has been as a fair-skinned man with long, wavy, light brown or blonde hair, often portrayed with blue eyes. However, the Bible does not physically describe Jesus, and evidence suggests he likely looked quite different from this traditional portrayal. Biblical narratives indicate Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth, Galilee, during the first century. While the Bible mentions Jesus beginning his ministry around the age of 30, it offers little detail about his physical attributes, except to suggest that he did not possess remarkable beauty or stand out physically, as Isaiah 53, 2 implies. Another mention is in Revelation 1, 14, 15, where John has a vision of Jesus. It describes his hair as white like wool, his eyes as fiery, his feet as glowing bronze, and his voice as powerful like rushing waters. Even though the depiction is not explicit, it clearly leans toward black features and physical traits. But why does Russia stand apart in depicting Jesus and his people as black in religious artworks? Well, the answer lies in the fact that Russia got disconnected from the Byzantine church when the whitewashing of religious paintings started. This was due to the Mongol invasion and occupation of Russia, known as the Golden Horde, which profoundly influenced the region's ties with the Byzantine Empire and the broader Christian world. 
Beginning in the early 13th century, the Mongols launched a series of military campaigns that resulted in the establishment of the Mongol Empire, one of history's largest continuous land empires. This expansion brought them into contact with various civilizations, including Russia. Until then, Russia had been in contact with the Byzantine Empire, significantly adopting its religious beliefs. But in 1237, the Mongols launched a devastating invasion of the Russian principalities, which were fragmented and unable to mount a unified defense. The invasion culminated in the Battle of the Sit River in 1238, where the Mongols emerged victorious. Subsequently, they gained control over the region, establishing the Golden Horde as a vassal state and imposing tribute on Russian princes. The Mongol occupation significantly reshaped Russia's connections with the Byzantine Empire and the wider Christian world. Before the invasion, Russia had close ties with Byzantium, particularly in religious matters, as the Eastern Slavic peoples had embraced Byzantine Christianity. The Russian Orthodox Church regarded Constantinople, the Byzantine capital, as its spiritual center. However, the Mongol invasion disrupted these ties. With much of Russia under Mongol control, communication and trade routes suffered, severing contact with Byzantium. Additionally, the invasion strained the Russian Orthodox Church as the Mongols imposed their administrative structures, occasionally clashing with the Church's authority. It's believed that before the invasion, both Russia and the Byzantine Empire had similar artworks. However, after the invasion, the whitewashing of religious artworks began in Europe, unlike in Russia, which remained under Mongol rule for another 250 years. Consequently, Russia stands alone in preserving religious artworks, where Jesus and his people are depicted as black, while the rest of Europe whitewashed such artworks. The religious artworks in Russia offer compelling evidence that, until now, Jesus, his mother, and his people were portrayed inaccurately. Concealing Jesus' complexion altered the narrative, presenting him solely as the savior of white people, which did not align with the full story. However, acknowledging Jesus as black provides coherence, considering the parallels between the suffering endured by black people and that of Jesus. What do you think? Was Jesus black or white, given that he was from Israel, a region where black people lived? What's more opinion on why Europe tried showing Jesus, his mother, and his people as white? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on whether all Jesus paintings should be changed and whether Jesus should be depicted in real complexion, black. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it.